Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Tep uh, repair video. In today's episode, we're going to be working on this 2019 uh, 15 inch MacBook Pro in silver. This is a model A1990. Uh, we're going to be showing you how to replace the battery. Uh, we do have these batteries available on our website or linked in the description below. But let's go ahead and get into today's repair. So we're going to start by flipping the unit over and removing the pencil lobe screws on the bottom case. Uh, note that the two on the top right and left are going to be longer, oops, longer than the bottom blocks. Now I'm going to use a suction cup to help remove the bottom case. And after removing the bottom case, uh, the first thing we're going to do, and the first thing you do for any repair, is disconnect the battery. So we're going to lift up that tape cover, and then unplug the battery management unit flex cable. Take a T5 screwdriver, and unscrew the T5 pancake screw that connects the logic board jumper to the battery daughter board. And now our unit is safe to work on, and we can proceed with any repairs uh, in this case, the battery. All right, now we're gonna take a T3 screwdriver and undo the two T3s and remove the retention bracket for the trackpad flex cable. And we're gonna go ahead and unplug the keyboard and the trackpad flex cable and peel the trackpad off of the battery. While we have the spudger in hand, uh, since we're gonna be removing the battery, we're also gonna unplug uh, fully the Battery management unit flex cable, set that aside for now. I'm gonna grab a PL1 and remove these two screws that secure the battery daughter board to the top case. And going back to a T5 screwdriver, I'm gonna remove all the screws around the trackpad here. Now you don't necessarily need to remove the trackpad to replace the battery. I do it just to be safe, so I don't damage the trackpad with isopropyl alcohol or my scraper, which we'll use later on. And after removing all those screws, we can simply open the unit up slowly and feed the trackpad cable through. Now we can pull out our trackpad and set it aside. All right, so in order to remove this battery, you'll notice that there's two runners to the uh, daughter board that go under the logic board. So we will have to remove uh, either the entire logic board or just certain screws, uh, which is what we're gonna do in today's video uh, to tilt the logic board up and get the battery out and the new one in. So the two screws I just removed here are T3s. We're gonna stick with that same T3 screwdriver and remove this retention bracket on the right-hand side. Then we're gonna switch back to a T5 and remove uh, these logic board screws all around the board. And now we're going to unplug a lot of cables. So I'm just going to start on the left hand side with our left hand speaker. Uh, you don't have to unplug the Wi Fi antenna cables. If you have issues uh, tilting the board up enough, you can unplug those. Now I'm going to unplug the right hand speaker. Uh, don't forget we already unplugged the keyboard down here. I'm going to unplug our mic array on the right hand side here. And that should be it. So once you get these three, the keyboard and the speaker unplugged, hopefully, as you can see here, we have enough play either by pulling up on this or getting in there with a plastic spudger and prying the board up. We have enough play to get our battery out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take some isopropyl alcohol out of a dropper uh, and just go around the outside of the battery here. This is going to weaken the adhesive and make it easier to uh, pry our battery out. And 
and we're gonna let the isopropyl alcohol sit for a second and then take our flat edge uh, spudger here and pry up the battery. Okay, so after letting the isopropyl alcohol sit for a little, we're gonna go ahead and pry up our battery. If it's difficult to get out, go ahead and use more isopropyl alcohol. Um, totally up to you, whatever you're comfortable using. Um, just obviously don't use too much, but since we removed the trackpad, uh, you're safe to go ahead and use a decent amount. All right, so after prying the battery free, we're gonna go ahead and lift up the logic board and pull our battery out. Okay, so I'm gonna use more isopropyl alcohol, which I already applied, and a razor to scrape off the remaining adhesive strips left on the top case here. Okay, so now that we have all of the leftover adhesive removed, uh, we're good to go ahead and put in our new battery. So I'm not gonna peel off the adhesive covers yet. I'm gonna go ahead and get it into place first, once again, by lifting up the logic board and sliding the battery in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of the protective coverings on the adhesive strips that way the battery sticks firmly in place and with the adhesive now ready to be properly set we're just going to make sure we line the battery up and press it down and remove the secondary protective covering on the top side And the very first thing I'm gonna do is secure uh, the battery daughter board with our pentalobe screws here. Okay, so now that we have the battery in and secured, we're just gonna go ahead and connect all of our connections that we unplugged. And with all of our connections back in, we can go ahead and screw the logic board back into place. Uh, those two first screws are T3s, and then we're gonna move on to T5. We're gonna go back to our T3 screwdriver to secure this retention bracket on the right hand side. And now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our trackpad. Uh, if you do remove your trackpad, make sure all of the washer standoffs are over all of the screw points here or else your trackpad will not have that tactile click you're used to. So we're gonna open the unit up, set the trackpad in feed our trackpad flex cable through and line up our trackpad. We're gonna plug in our trackpad flex cable. And now we're gonna secure the trackpad back down using the T5s that we took out.
With our trackpad installed, we're now gonna go ahead and install the retention bracket with the two T3 screws. And before I screw in the uh, jumper to the battery board, I'm gonna plug in the battery management unit flex cable to the battery daughter board. And now we're gonna take a T5 screwdriver and secure the pancake screw that connects the logic board battery jumper to the battery daughter board and plug in the battery management unit flex cable. And now we're gonna go ahead and grab a charger, plug it in and make sure everything works before we put the bottom case on. So we've got our charger here. We're gonna go ahead and plug the unit in. Give it a second to realize that it's charging and open the unit up. And as you can see, our unit turned on. We're just gonna go ahead and make sure it's reporting a charge, detecting the battery, holding the charge. And when we unplug it and plug it back in, that it's charging once again. All right, so it is detecting a charge. If I unplug it, it does hold a charge and detect a battery. And if I plug it back in, it is charging again. So our battery is all good to go. We just have to reinstall our bottom case. All right. So just a couple things to remember here. Uh, if your battery is not detected after you replace it, check your battery management unit flex cable, make sure it's plugged in, not damaged or anything like that. Uh, if your battery is flopping around, if you hear a thud every time you move the unit, uh, your battery's loose, you may need to glue it down additionally. And don't forget that your two longest pentalobe screws in the bottom case go on the top and right. But that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Once again, if you saw any parts or tools you needed in today's video, uh, check out the links below or check us out at techtep.com. We also offer mail-in repair and data recovery service for those of you all over the world. Once again, check out, check out techtip.com or click the links below for more information. We'll see you guys in the next episode.